The following episode of Doki Doki Literature Club Plus depicts a disturbing scene containing suicide. If you find this topic upsetting or uncomfortable, then this is the episode you should stop watching the series. Depression is a very real and valid problem, and if you are suffering from it, please seek assistance. Your discretion is advised. Howdy folks, Kiwi here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club Plus! Stage so Festival should be awesome, where we are, of course... <laughs> Oh man! All right, so um, I'll probably put up a uh, a, a, a discretion, like a content warning at the beginning, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, this is this is the episode where the thing happens. So if you don't want to watch, you know, the rest of the series is also bad after this point uh, until we do the side stories at the very end. So you know, y you're smart enough to figure this out. Y you know what you got. Anyway. <clears throat> I keep, Natsuki suddenly gets closer to me. Wait, Natsuki. Standing inches from me, Natsuki looks up at me. I feel her fingers gently clutch to the sides of my shirt, as if holding on to me. Her rose-colored cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision, along with her slightly parted lips. What, what is happening? My head starts to go dizzy as I feel soft breaths, with a TH, against me. I've felt it for a while now. So he suddenly jumps back. So, say all right. Eh. Ah. Uh, uh, hi, Kiwi. Say oi. Just now we went. <laughs> it's okay, Kiwi. I just stopped by to say hi. But, uh, but she did. She did the thing where she's like trying to be better, and you know she came out. She had a good day. No. Ah. Uh, well, you, you should have come a little earlier. I'm already on my way out, so... Oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well... I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyway, later. She sprints away, um, foreseeing dire consequences for this particular action. Also, I hate that it's silent. I, mi I missed the music. I'm not going to miss the music later on, but definitely right now. Clearly flustered, Natsuki hurries off and Sayori waves goodbye. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Oh, okay, good. Whew, sad music, but still music. Ah, <laughs> well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Natsuki. And how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. <laughs> Unlike the, la the last uh, half of the game, this is the part that hits a little harder because it's a little more real. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Kiwi? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. It would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sorry, don't say that. It's true, Kiwi. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica... Monica was right about what? Sayori. What I said before is still true. I'm not gonna let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it makes takes an entire lifetime, I'm gonna be by your side until you don't feel more, any more pain. Mmm, bad wording. But... but Sayori looks away. Put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Kiwi. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... That I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Kiwi? I like you so much that I want to die. Mmm, words that I've heard real people say. 
not not the first half of that, but se definitely the second half, and it's just never good, never good. That's how I feel, and and it's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand uh, down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? You still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all your own feelings. I know uh, what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Sayori. Alright, so. Conversation time. Originally, in the last series, um, in the original series, I chose the I love you path because I took a long time going through the different options of like what it means, how it's going to be interpreted, like all, all of the consequences I could. And yeah, um, I chose this one because it felt the most right. Um, but that wasn't actually the case, and, uh, it's not, she doesn't need a boyfriend right now. I, like, she doesn't need either of these things right now. No binary choice is good right now. But, I'm gonna choose this one this time. Not just because it's a different option and I get to see different choices, but because what she needs right now is support. She doesn't need some sort of love interest to complicate things. What she needs is stability and to feel like things haven't changed. Which is what she was desiring before. So even if she says that she wants, uh, uh, fucking, th that she likes me more than I like her, what she needs right now is a good friend, not a boyfriend. Alright. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most for, is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now. Feelings I I personally don't understand. But, please tell me, please trust me, that I know what's best and that, and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll get things back to the way they were. I, I see. Sorry forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. <laughs> Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I tried a poem about this. Sayori. It's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. God, I hate this. I hate it. It hurts. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just want it to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know what uh, me better than myself, Kiwi. I trust you with anything, anything at all. So, so her smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees, and screams loudly, which I'm not going to emulate because I feel like that would ruin the mood. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. So he looks over his shoulder and flashes me one weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayoi. I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more I could have done. The most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But having so much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is, even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sorry will always be my dearest friend. And I'll do every I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. It's the day of the festival, and there is silence. Of all the days I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori, but Sayori isn't answering her phone. I consider going to her house to wake her up, but that, I decided that's a little too much. Mmm, nope. That scream should be flag enough to do something about anything. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all the cupcakes myself by carefully stacking two trays. Natsuki is already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great, too. Kiwi, you're the first one here. 
Thanks for being early. That's funny. I uh, thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's one I'll be performing. I'm surprised I didn't bring Siori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. Stupid piece of shit. God, what a fucking... I hate... I'm just filled with hatred right now. You'd think on days this important she'd try a little harder. I say that, but then suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. You know, like a person with memory would do. Suddenly feel awful knowing it's not that simple for her. I only said it because that's it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe you should have gone to wake her up after all? <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Kiwi. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. Kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But I stammer embarrassed. Did Siori really tell her about it that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? Makes me feel uh, really seem like the bad guy here. There is a bunch of different dialogue here. That's interesting. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Hey, <laughs> don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? It came out real nice. Yeah, sure. Uh, before we continue, um, I'm going to save and see if anything has changed on the, uh... On the, uh, the, the main screen. Hmm. I feel like something should have changed. But oh well. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Um, eh. Grab one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this really def uh, will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Atsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. Alright, so. Prepare. <laughs> this is the one I haven't read before. Um, before I do what I know is best for you, I listen to everything she said to me, I show you how much I love you, finish writing his poem. The poem is never finished, it just stops moving. Ah, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Kaylee, what's wrong? Ah, nothing. The poem feels completely different from everything else they already written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go get Sayori, so... Alright. Well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls out after me. I quicken my pace. It's the silence is the worst part of this. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or, wait, or help wake her up. Even the simplest gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same they've always been. That's all she needs, and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? Oh god, oh, oh, I just got a pit in my stomach because I just remembered. She's a really heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking up in her own house? Uh, isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Inside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Not reading that. There's no response. Really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. It's kind of a breach of privacy. But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Say, oh, there it is. Whew. What 
What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best, that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession? That has to have been what pushed her over the edge. Her agonizing scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her after what she needed uh, when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming t uh, thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and gave her what I uh, know she wanted out of our relationship. And I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's not gone forever now. Nothing I do will bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and do something different. I had one, only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And I'll carry that guilt, this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 And... And now the real game begins. Hey! Well, they're still there, interestingly. Let's, uh... Let's take a step back for a second. What was it? It was game... Scripts. Can't read that. Open. Nope, won't let me. It said there was an error in here. Can't look at it. Oh well. Sure do wish I could see these things like I did in the original. Uh, let's try and load. Uh, the file's missing or corrupt. Save files corrupt, starting a new game. Okay. Ah! And then the music. I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious. Any attention? She might draw to herself. This girl is ah, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase me a after me like this, I almost feel bad, better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let I catch up to me. Those green eyes. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I'm always walking to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or do or something like that, but I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. First of all, that's a stereotype. Rude. Girls like anime. Secondly, that's all the point I had, really. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, they stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clabs. Uh, there really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. Guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Kiwi. Monica? Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Uh, yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We didn't know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica's probably the most popular girl in class. The smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. 
So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... Well, could you... Uh, what did you come in, uh, in here for, anyway? Uh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. You know, there's not any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you can check that closet over there. You're in the debate club, right? <laughs> well, about that. I actually quit the debate club. I was tired of it. All, all people only ever debated. Um, nah. That'll have to be for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, I'm Kiwi. I'm great to you yourself. Life of that. Love you all. Goodbye. Please be safe out there.